What's up guys, Gorilla Geek going 10 8. And this is going to be a quick video about assembling a Diamond D130 NJ disc tone antenna. And this is how it comes uh, all disassembled by the mail. I just got it today. And this is an N channel connector. This sort of antenna right here, or cable rather. Uh, you can use PL249. Uh, I chose N channel because it's more efficient for higher frequencies from 300 megahertz on up. And since this is a scanner antenna, I only plan I plan to scan the upper frequencies on the public safety uh, radio frequencies. So this comes with this all assembled, and I had to undo three uh, screws on the side here to to disconnect this pipe from the top assembly there. And that's where your connector is located, right there, end channel connector. This is a piece of uh, coax, just a small piece, and uh, we usually call this a pigtail. So uh, this connects to the antenna, and this is going to connect to your other side of your transmission line. Uh, it's just a convenient way to replace it or fix it up or whatever later down the road, having two pieces like this. But. Uh, what I want to do is, since I got this all apart, is connect the cable and uh, weatherproof it since I got it down on the ground. So I'm going to put a layer of uh, electrical tape. And not all electrical tape are made the same way. This here is used in the industry to uh, cover antenna connections and stuff out in the elements. And this is the model Scotch Super 33 Plus. I'm just going to do one layer. And I'm going to start from the bottom and just wrap it around on my way up nice and tight. And I'm starting from the bottom because when I do just one layer, as you do the layers, more, uh, the seams is kind of like roof shingles. It would was, it was slick downwards rather than pull up on the seams. So once you do it on your own, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to do one layer, just one wrap. And this is so if I need to get in here, I could just use uh, an X-Acto knife or whatever and, and it'll slice and come apart easily. And also help out with the moisture and whatnot. The next weatherproofing uh, material is uh, Scotch self-bonding electrical tape. And it's uh, made out of rubber and we call it uh, snakeskin because one side of it is uh, wrapped in some sort of cellophane or whatever and it kind of looks like snakeskin and this is self-fusing rubber you wrap it around something it'll it'll fuse together to make it one mon monolithic uh, piece I'm just gonna do one layer of this going from the bottom on up because if I put too many layers the, the tube this tube here might not fit over the assembly because this tube will fit over the connections there so I don't really need to put too much weatherproofing since it's already protected by the steel stainless steel but I like to put some sort of protection more so than, than you know you do the job once and you won't have to go back up there again so what I do is I cut a little piece estimate a length here because it's kind of hard to wheel this around when you're wrapping it so a nice small uh, manageable piece take off a little bit of the uh, snake skin and just start from the bottom stretch it out a little bit wrap it around just like so and it won't stick it'll take a little bit of time for the tape to uh, fuse together so it may come apart if you're if you're too fast or too loose with it. This tape, by the way, makes good handles like uh, axe handle. You know, just rubberize it, get a nice grip, wrap it around the, the your pistol grip. Haven't tried it yet, but uh, I just thought about that idea just now. So there we go. So when you get to the top there, you want to make it nice and tight and then sort of stretch it, stretch it and hold it down so it'll fuse. Okay, go, go potty. So here I thread the one end of the connector through the tube. And there's my self-fusing rubber there, all fused together and is completely waterproof now. And I think you can see the layering of the tape where it's layering downwards. 
And like I said, don't put too much because I just got barely enough room to slip the, uh, the pipe right over it. You have this uh, screw in here to screw the uh, skirt part of it or the cone part of the disc cone antenna. So you have these holes here where you can screw it in. That's what sets the poles in there in place. You take your longer pole and they're all the same size. Stick it in towards the bottom and tighten it down. Well, I had to do the cone part of it first because uh, if I do the uh, disc, I'll have a difficult time getting a, you know, get my tool in there to turn uh, to tighten these the uh, skirt part of it out, the uh, cone part of it. So I'm going a little bit backwards here just for ease here. I'm just tighten it down. Well. I was going to take these black uh, caps off because uh, on two other models that were deployed I noticed that uh, the tube here is hollow and this is still hollow, it's pretty light and uh, when I took the cap off uh, water sort of drained out from it so I was going to install it without these black caps and just have it naturally drain on its own while it's up in the air uh, on one end there's uh, some sort of uh, filler in there where you screw in the uh, set screw in there and then the tip where the black is some sort of plastic cover there so I think this thing is uh, airtight so uh, condensation won't have an effect inside of it I don't know so I don't really need to uh, take this off I'll just keep it on there so this I guess this is on a newer model uh, antennas just sort of point that out so now I'm going to screw in the uh, disc portion of the antenna and it's all threaded and easily put together I figure I just might as, might as well make a video about this all the way in the uh, locking nut is all, all, all to the one side and then I just lock it down with a little bit of uh, tension there and it's on there pretty solid and these rods are solid solid stainless steel and these are hollow And there she is, fully assembled. Gorilla Geek going 10-10.